Now, as you may recall, OPF benefits multiple industries such as power gen, power transmission, industrial facilities, and microgrids. So therefore, when we look at the OPF strategies, for example, for microgrid systems, we can leverage economic dispatch where we can improve power generation efficiency, balance renewables and system security, as well as minimize losses and fuel cost. We can use OPF to also manage our grid exchange control, such as balancing the grid exchange power, including setting limits such as net zero, improve voltage stability and maximize voltage security at the same time. We can also use OPF for optimal asset operation where we can minimize excessive mechanical movements, determine optimal set points over a broad range of functions, again such as tap changers and other mechanical equipment. We can also leverage OPF for a microgrid system to understand the impact of an islanded operation and then apply OPF to minimize losses and cost, maximize security and of course optimize voltages. Let's quickly consider a microgrid system where we have a number of wind turbines, solar power generation, energy storage, a couple of loads, a diesel generator and a grid connection. So here essentially when we run our load flow simulation we can see the voltages vary from 100 all the way down to 97 percent and we have uh, import coming in from the grid which is 3.4 megawatt and the diesel is generating about 1 megawatt. Of course we are not necessarily controlling the PV and the wind turbine output because they vary based on irradiance and wind speed accordingly. So we'll focus a little bit more on the diesel and the grid exchange power. If we look at the losses for this particular system, we notice that the output report in ETAP gives us the total system losses, the real power which is about 0.1 uh, megawatt and 0.3 megawatts. So when we switch over to optimal power flow and run our OPF solution, we can see that the diesel is generating about 1 megawatt and our grid exchange is set to zero. Now this may look absolutely perfect. However, if you notice the voltages, they are very low. They are around 50% which is unacceptable. So the first thing that we would normally do is set up the bus voltage constraint and we can set up bus 2 to be constrained within 97, 203% and go ahead and rerun our simulation and we of course come back with our problem being infeasible. So therefore we need to put some controls. So we can go ahead and put our control in for the transformer taps and rerun the calculation to see if that helps us improve the, the voltage and in this case it doesn't. So we try one more technique which allows us to vary the generator and the utility reactive power as well as the real power in the system. And we can go ahead and run our simulation now and we do get a solution where the voltages are within acceptable ranges and the generator and the utility are actually right now balancing uh, the power uh, that they are generating. Now the power that they are balancing is based on a couple of objectives and the objectives are set up for real reactive power loss minimization but also for fuel cost. So therefore the dispatch is now done based on 2 megawatts roughly each. And if we go ahead and look at the summary report in terms of our losses in this system, we expect uh, some minor improvement. Uh, so we essentially see about 0.137 instead of 0.155 and our reactive power is also slightly uh, lower. So that's one quick way of uh, looking at a microgrid solution and establishing an OPF solution that works well for this network and then start optimizing other constraints and controls in the system to get a more optimized uh, power flow in this type of network.